over the years, I have been lucky enough to capture on camera some of the most iconic and greatest cars of all time. And I would like to think, as the years have gone by, my camera work has improved. But now I have this new camera. A camera which allows me greater control of the focus length, the exposure, all sorts of different tools and tricks. Now, I didn't want to experiment with this when I was, you know, inexperienced on a big show. So I went to a smaller show. The first show of the year, in fact, the Chrome and Ice Car Show up in Flint. And I'm going to be straight with you. This is very much an American car show. Apart from some mediocre Volkswagen Beetles, this pretty cool Datsun 240Z was the only non-American car there. This was 110% a celebration of cars between 1930 and 1973. That was the golden era of American cars, many people will say. And more specifically, although the Hot Rods and the Woodward-style cruisers are great, this show focused a lot on American muscle cars. And I decided to use this to test that focal exposure. So you will probably see a few times where it's a little bit fuzzy in some places. I'm getting the focus right. I'm going to hopefully get better with it before the real shows begin. Um, that's why this video is so much shorter, because it wasn't a proper full-size show. Bear with me. Thank you. All right, moving on to the cars themselves. They're iconic muscle cars. First off, all of the paint schemes are immaculate. Most of them are custom or at least um, redone. So they are fantastic looking machines. And they're all pretty darn rare or exclusive in their own right. Whether they be a half dozen Chevelles, sadly no 454s, but 396s are certainly not bad. And there, were whole, and there were lots of different variations of Chevelles. It was very popular in the Chevrolet department because not only were there Chevelles, but there were also Corvettes, there were Camaros, and there was a really freaking cool Nova. It is lightly modified, but it's subtle. It's not ostentatious. It looks fantastic. There was also this ultra-rare Dodge Coronet RT440 with the six-pack carburetor convertible. That's a very rare combination. And there was this supercharger that was attached to a Roadrunner. <laughs> I love crazy modifications like this. It was a Roadrunner attached. I mean, the supercharger is as tall as the windshield of the car. <laughs> but it wasn't just American classics. There was really classic stuff, like this custom hot rod from the 20s. Which, I'm used to bicycle, bicycle tires on the front, that's relatively normal. But bicycle tires on the rear, with a redone vehicle, it's an odd, brave, and very dangerous choice, but I kind of respect it. I also really respect this. And no, that little bar on the back is not a rear wing like I initially thought of it was from a distance. It's just the bench seat. This is a Model A tractor from Ford from 1920. It's 102 years old, and it still works. It's one of the oldest cars I've ever seen outside of Henry Ford Museum. It was awesome. Speaking of awesome, there were quite a lot of race cars in attendance. For what was a small show, I was pretty impressed. There were a whole lot of dragsters, gassers, and they sort of ranged from the gases of the 60s to the pro-stock sort of space frame chassis builds of the 90s and 2000s, and all of the way up, to the big boys. I should really say the long boys because this is a genuine top fuel dragster from the early 2000s with the massive supercharger wing and skinny tires and all. I always love seeing top fuels. They're awesome. And surprisingly, there were a lot of indie cars too. Whether they be the modern indie cars, the current ones, or this, I guess, the 1940s equivalent of an indie light racer, or this. Probably most surprising car in show, a 1933 Miller Indy car that finished 5th overall at the Indy 500 that year. That's awesome. I've never seen a 1930s Indy car that came so close to winning. 
And yes, you're looking at it correctly. That is the gearbox right where the driver's foot is. Those old drivers were a different league, man. I never expected to see this, to be honest. It's a great-looking car. It's got a lot of history. And the fact that it's at a seemingly random car show in Flint is kind of incredible. But it's not all that surprising relative to these things, because these are the ones I expected. I didn't expect the indie cars, but I expected these. These are movie and TV cars. So, for instance, we got a replica Ferrari 308 that was used on the Magnum P.I. TV show. Or the other famous TV show, Batman, one of the very few original Batmobiles from 1966 TV show and movie. Other iconic movie TV show cars included a fully functional, except for the whole, you know, weapons and sentience thing, Trans Am kit, or one of the hundreds of General Lees that was used over the filming of Dukes of Hazard. And I like this one because it's an actual jump car. One of, again, many. But it's not perfect. They had to rebuild it. And it looks great. And it's iconic. And if you want a different form of iconic, I guess, redneck vehicle for a more simplistic rudimentary term, the Smokey and the Bandit Trans Am. And as much as I love Smokey and the Bandit, and I do, it will always come second to the true king of the silver screen. The greatest movie car of all time. The Back to the Future DMC DeLorean. And this is an epic vehicle. It was in, I think, one of the Illinois um, film museums. So it's a prop car from the movie, and it is intra incredibly detailed. From the flux capacitor to the hoverboard, it's a masterpiece. The DeLorean itself may be a bit weird, but the Back to the Future DeLorean is one of the greatest cars ever made. I think ever. It was a phenomenal machine, and to be honest, this has actually been a pretty good start to the year in general. Um... Sure, it's a small show, and I mainly went to it for um, experimentation with this new camera I'm working with, but the cars were pretty damn incredible. A lot better than I thought of. I never thought I would see the General Lee. I never thought I would see old Indian cars. I never thought I would see a 440 carb, um, six barrel carb Coronet RT. And yet, they were here. So, if this is the start of the year in February when nobody is doing car shows, I can't imagine what's going to be coming later. So thank you for bearing with me on this experiment. If you like it, tell me. If you don't, tell me. Otherwise, I'll be back with more.